Nintendo has announced that they'll be ending online services for the Wii U and 3DS consoles as of April 2024. This comes shortly after Nintendo restored online functionality to Mario Kart 8 and Splatoon, which were down for emergency maintenance, so it's a little weird that they decided to just pull the plug. Nintendo stated that they'll announce a specific end date at a later time, but may have to discontinue services earlier if necessary due to technical difficulties. Anyway, welcome to Necro News, the show where we cover the hottest gaming news from the last week. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on the hottest gaming news. Oh, and a minor side note to you guys, you're still able to use offline features and game modes that don't require internet connection like Street Pass, so that's still cool. Man, did I pick a great time to buy a Wii U again, huh? And more Sony news, it's happened again. Sony, are you okay? Th that, that's two hacks in less than a month of each other. Sony Interactive Entertainment has recently revealed that they could have been hurt by what could be the largest data breach of 2023. Unfortunately, that also means their former employees were hurt too. The hack was carried out by an infamous Russian-linked cybercrime cartel known as CLOP, or TA-505, who claimed responsibility for exploiting a zero-day vulnerability in their Move-It transfer software. The hackers accessed the personal information of thousands of former employees, 6,791 to be exact, which included their social security numbers. Of course, Sony assured that no related systems were compromised and that the vulnerability was quickly patched after discovery. They also stated that they will provide people affected by the breach with complimentary credit monitoring and identity restoration services. So that's something, I guess. And more Sony news. Two years ago, a Knights of the Old Republic remake was announced and has been radio silence ever since. Which sucks, especially since you guys were cut from getting the Switch version of the DLC. Well, at least we have the Steam version. All hail Gaben. Anyway, keen-eyed Twitter user DataRacer117 has pointed out that the trailer for the remake has been made private and all tweets by Bioware pertaining to the remake are suddenly missing. What could this mean? Well, there's a lot of speculation, the biggest theory being that recent issues within the Embracer group has led to the cancellation of the game. However, Kotaku, of all people, did get a message from Sony stating that the trailer was removed due to issues of licensed music. That doesn't quite explain the missing tweets, though. Anyway, last bit of Sony news is that the well-known leaker, Viewer Anon, has reported that Santa Monica Studios is currently working on a new God of War project. The leaker explained that it's unclear whether it's DLC or a half-sequel that's basically a new game that's very mechanically similar to Ragnarok. All he knows is that it's a full God of War project, which is cool I guess, but I've never played it so I don't really care. Well, a fun little bit of side trivia for you about God of War. Did you know that before the new God of War series was finalized, the original story of God of War was that each religion had their own version of Kratos, and that in the original vision, the finale of the series culminated in all of the different Kratoses getting together to kill the god of the universe, or something like that. Cool stuff. So basically he kills God. Well, he, he already killed God in the God of War, which is why the new God of Wars are dumb. Like the God? Well, Zeus, which is the God for him. No, I was talking about the Christian God. God with a capital G. So oh, Ubisoft is still sinking. And this time, pretty badly. We'll start with the more serious news and then go on to the less serious ones. But to begin with, back in 2020, allegations of widespread sexual misconduct, discrimination, and harassment within Ubisoft were making the rounds, leading to a long case and multiple departures from the high-level executives from the company. Two of which being former chief creative officer Sergey Hascoat and ex-VP of editorial and creative services Tommy Francois both of which were arrested, along with three other executives, early last week. The arrest follows complaints by La Solidarity Informatique Union and two victims from 2021. Also sorry French people if I massacred that. The plaintiff's lawyer stated that the case reveals systematic sexual violence. Ubisoft has no comment on it because they don't know what's been shared. But if it was just the people that sucked, they wouldn't be sinking so hard. No, unfortunately their game sucked too. Such as their latest game, Assassin's Creed Mirage, which is currently sitting at the lowest rated game in the series with a 77 on Metacritic. Did they name it Mirage because they wanted people to think it was a good game? No, they named it Mirage because when you got the game, you thought it was going to be de nouveau free. But then the moment you buy it, you get a day one patch that adds de nouveau. Of course, that means that review copies of the game didn't have the performance impact that de nouveau imparts onto those games. Yeah, it still got a poor rating. Maybe they shouldn't have tried to remake Assassin's Creed 1. 
and you know stopped after Ezio, but whatever. At least we had Black Flag. Bungie was in the headlines this week on Twitter for releasing this tweet. Yeah, any person of any Hispanic descent typically finds the usage of anything other than Latino or Latina to be offensive. So the comments were hilarious, to say the least. We're not here to talk about Twitter drama. There is plenty of other channels for that. We're here to talk about what happened three days later, because Bungie is now being sued for retaliation and wrongful termination by a former HR manager. Ingrid Alm was hired by Bungie in May of 2022 as an HR manager. A few months in, she was instructed to investigate one James Smith. And when talking to Smith, he highlighted how he was the only black employee on the team of 50 people, and he felt like he was being racially targeted by a supervisor. When Alm brought this up to her own supervisor, recommending Smith's supervisor undertake diversity training, she was allegedly met with hostility and denial. The supervisor defended Smith's super by saying they'd been there for a long time and were highly regarded. Because that hasn't been said about anyone who hasn't done anything wrong ever. So of course the recommendation was denied, and after some time, Bungie then allegedly recommended firing Smith. And when Alm disagreed with the firing, considering it an act of racial bias, she approached Bungie's Director of Equity and Inclusion, Dr. Courtney Benjamin, in September. Dr. Benjamin felt that firing Smith was too risky considering the evidence, and recommended giving a written warning instead. This made Alm's supervisor extremely angry, landing Alm a write-up via email and a recommendation to look for an off-ramp. You know, like suggesting a person quits. Strongly. Which they further attempted to coerce by removing access to our Bungie email. Though not to be deterred, she continued her job as usual to the best of her abilities. Unfortunately, at the end of September, she received an email stating that her resignation had been accepted, despite never having signed one. IGN reports Bungie instead either flatly denies almost every part of Alm's narrative without further context, or denies them with the statement that Bungie lacks knowledge or information sufficient to form a belief as to the truth or falsity of the allegation. So guys, what are your thoughts on this matter? My take? I, I hate stuff like this. She was doing her job the way she was told to do it, to the best of her abilities, and has been fired for it. So I, I hope she wins the lawsuit. I agree, but that's just our opinions. Let us know what you guys think about this story in the comments down below. If there was a Zodiac calendar for the 2020s, 2023 would be the year of the layoff. Naughty Dog, Epic Games, Telltale Games, and Bioware have all lost employees over the past week. Let's dive right into it. Naughty Dog, the devs behind The Last of Us, The Last of Us Part 2, The Last of Us Part 1 Remastered, and the rumored Last of Us Part 2 Remaster, announced that they are laying off 25 members of their staff. This was surprising because the HBO adaptation was so good, but this may be the result of their multiplayer spin-off suffering in development hell as well. Those that were laid off weren't giving any severance and all employees are also being pressured to keep quiet. Telltale Games has confirmed to Jeff Keighley that they have let go of some of their workforce. Details are currently limited in the story since we don't know how many were laid off. Jonah Huang, 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 Jonah Huang, Jonah Huang, Jonah Huang. Jonah, Jonah Huang, Jonah, Jonah Huang, jo, mm. Jonah Huang, thank you. Former Telltale Cinematic Editor claimed it was most of the staff without specifying if they were most of the staff that were working on The Wolf Among Us 2 or the entire company. The fate of Telltale 2.0 is unknown, but we're pretty sure The Wolf Among Us 2 will still happen, whether by Telltale or not. As last week, the author of Fables, the comic that The Wolf Among Us is based off of, publicly announced that the entire IP has been put into the public domain. Next is Bioware, and this one's a doozy in terms of tenure and complications. Bioware terminated 50 employees without cause this past August and is now being sued by 7 of those employees for insultingly low severance amounts. As Bioware is based in Edmonton, Canada, the company is subject to the rulings of the Provincial Alberta Court which has precedent rulings of one month of severance per year of service to a company, full benefits included. It may be a while before this case goes in any direction, but we're keeping an eye on it. Probably going a better direction than the ending of Mass Effect, that's for sure. Anyway, the final round of layoffs come from Epic Games, as 830 people got laid off from the company last week. This follows the massive financial hit Epic received from the FTC pertaining to the Fortnite Stark Patterns court case, the total damage being over $500 million. This, alongside a near $100 million investment in the new campus in North Carolina, has put them in a pretty tight spot. I thought the Epic Store was supposed to bring in the money, huh, Tim? What, what, whatever happened to that? Why did it take you a month to add a shopping cart to your store? Anyway, related to this financial turmoil, 
Epic has announced that it will now start charging non-game developers for using the Unreal Engine. This means film and animation studios no longer get free rides, and it's a subscription-based model. Good job, Epic. A little better than Unity. Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty released last week, and with it came a whole bunch of optimizations to the game with a 2.0 patch, which we did previously cover, and an amazing story. Please buy it if you haven't already. In fact, the DLC was so successful that it sold over 3 million copies during its first peak, which is pretty significant for a game that got blasted during its release. The game's newfounded surge in popularity is likely due to edge runners and the hard work of the team at CDPR for making the game better with each update. CDPR has also gone on record to state that they are done with Cyberpunk 2077 and are happy with what they've done with the game, but they do plan on releasing a complete edition of the game at some point in the future. For the meantime, however, they'll be working on Project Orion, which will be the next game in the Cyberpunk franchise. Also, due to the success that Cyberpunk 2077 has seen, CDPR has confirmed that they will be doing more transmedia productions for the series, including a live action project. The project will be set in the world of Cyberpunk and will be handled by indie global media company Anonymous Content. Is it a movie, a show, music video? No one knows yet, but we do know that CDPR will be working closely with Anonymous Content to ensure that the product is up to par, which is better than what they could say happened to The Witcher. We got one more thing for you guys. On the 30th, 3D Realms did a showcase for a bunch of upcoming shooters. And honestly, there are a lot of good ones. Instead of reading off and describing each one of them for you, we're just going to show you a bit from each of the announcement trailers and have the name next to them. Think of this as a bear to life banger because we don't have time to do one this week. Drive hard. Drive Mustang. Here are the games coming out this week. There's not a whole lot, though the Lords of the Remake... Lords of the Remake... Lords of the Fallen Remake looks good. And here's our streaming schedule for next week. And if you like what we do here, consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like, and let us know what you think about the stories this week. And a special thank you to our YouTube and Coffee members, but we do appreciate any support you guys can give us. So until next time, goodbye. goodbye.